Okay. Yeah. There's a lot of dentists that say that they do cosmetic dentistry. Uh, there's many signs out there of uh, cosmetic and family dentistry. Um, but there's also many veneers and, and crowns that, are, that break and, and uh, come off and just don't last. This is a place that teaches you how to make beautiful work, beautiful reconstruction of people's smiles that will last. Okay. So the bite, so there's a bite issue. You call it uh, neuromuscular dentistry. Uh, yes. This is what? This is what they teach. Uh, and there's, it's a huge component of uh, making things last. Uh, neuromuscular dentistry is based on the connection between the TMJ, the joint that connects the upper and lower jaws, the muscles of your face, and the teeth, and the harmony between them, and how the teeth last because the muscles are happy, basically. Okay, okay. And they teach you how to make the, hap the, the muscles happy. But, but, but patients don't. Patients really have no care idea. care about that, right? They just want a beautiful smile. Patients want a beautiful this smile. this is the behind and the scenes stuff, I guess. Uh, that's right, that's right. Okay, but most, patients, most patients don't know. They, they find out later whether the work lasted or they didn't last. Um, Interesting. So it's in the hands of the dentist. You know, in, in, in the U.S. here, where I'm interviewing you, mm -hmm. the, uh, well, the most famous dentist in the world, Bill Dorfman, I've interviewed him. Uh, you trained with him. Tell yes. me about that. Yeah, he's a great guy. Why, He's though? nice. I, mean, I like him. He, well, he's one of the gurus of uh, cosmetic dentistry. He's, uh, he helped create the show Extreme Makeovers. Yeah. If you're familiar with it. Oh, yes. I trained together with him. I wanted to learn from one of the best guys of what is it that he does that makes him um, so great. Interesting, and interesting. Makes him to create such beautiful smile, smile makeovers. And um, that made me even a better dentist. I well, good for you. You, you, know, you know, our show airs throughout the United States. Now, now it's launching in Canada. And whether it's a heart surgeon, a knee surgeon, the great ones seem to be fanatics about, you know, picking up picking everything up a notch. They, they want to get a little bit better. So let's begin with uh, the different categories of cosmetic patients you see, people that want to fix their smile. Well, cosmetic dentistry ranges anywhere from simple uh, cases to really complex uh, reconstruction. Simple, for example, whitening uh, for teeth that are dull, mid-discolored, yellow. We can whiten them in the office with um, zoom whitening, only 45 minutes. Okay. Or with custom, uh, custom trays at home, it's supervised type of whitening. When teeth are chipped a little bit, we can shape the teeth differently. Very, very simple procedure. It can take 15 minutes, but it okay. can make a huge difference. And there's another category of people whose mouth is this complete mess. And we reconstruct the mouth with uh, crowns, veneers, bridges, implants that give them the smile they always wanted. And then there's another category. Uh, it's called Invisalign. For people that don't want metal braces, Invisalign is a series of uh, medical grade aligners. Uh, like trays? Like trays, yes. Okay. Very, very thin, very firm. They're custom made and perfectly created to fit the teeth, uh, to shift them, to move them into a perfect alignment. And it works. Yes. And it works amazingly. Without, I mean, with no, I mean, no metal, no what brackets. Are the, what if the teeth are really kind of uh, messed up? Well, that's a great area for a lot of dentists, not for me. Okay. <laughs> Invisalign was originally uh, invented to create, uh, to, cut, to close little gaps. It was uh, created to make little changes. But nowadays, what we can do with Invisalign is absolutely amazing. 95% uh, of the adults that were going to go ahead with braces can now do Invisalign. Invisalign for teens. Invisalign for teen. Invisalign uh, teen is great. Saw that on the internet. Is that popular? It's becoming more and more popular. I've to, out of 103 cases that I did last year, 20 were for teens. The year before that, it was probably two. So Invisalign teen is becoming more and more popular um, and more socially acceptable. It, it's, because, it's the self-esteem of, uh, of the teenager that's... Uh, Doesn't that, like their smile, it could be tough. Uh, you're right, you're right. Now you say you're changing people's lives every day, every week. Yes. How so? Well, let me tell you a little story. Here's, right. here's a woman. That's a pretty nice smile, though. It's a nice smile, but she doesn't like it. Okay, okay. And that's the most important thing. When she came to me, she didn't, she wanted her teeth whiter. She wanted her teeth to look better. She wasn't sure exactly what it is that she didn't like about the teeth, but she asked me, 
what are my options? So I pointed out to her the black holes in the back of the teeth. You, on the sides of her mouth, okay. On the sides of her mouth, do you see that? These are big gaps between the top teeth and the bottom teeth. I also pointed out the front teeth that are really flattened, the shapes of the teeth. They, they're not symmetrical. The human eye judges beauty by symmetry. Brent, you have a beautiful smile. Okay, thank you. One of the things that makes a beautiful smile is showing so many teeth, showing 10 to 12 teeth, like Julia Roberts, right? Okay, yeah, she, she has a beautiful smile. smile, big smile. Right? Now, when you look at this smile, there's only four or six teeth really showing. The rest are kind of hiding in the back. Interesting. What I wanted to do is to whiten the smile, show more teeth, make them lighter, allow the front teeth to follow the lower lip line. I know it may not mean much to you right now. <laughs> okay. These are some of the... You're reading my mind here. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. Go ahead. I'm following this. You know, some of the very few of, of hundreds of principles of a smile design that you know, a dentist should really be considering when they're planning the, the beautiful end result uh, of, a, of a smile makeover. Okay. okay. And are you excited to see what yeah, I Okay, let's take a look at this actor. Ready? All right. Well, you know what I like about this? You're, you're, you're very proud of your work, right? I, I am. Okay. Okay. Let's take a look. I am. Absolutely. Okay. What do you think? Very nice, yeah. very nice. Do you see how the front teeth follow the lower lip line? What makes it so natural is that the two front teeth are slightly longer than the other teeth. So that's that by design, like, that's by design. That's by design. Every corner of every single tooth is designed and has a purpose. The purpose is to make them look natural, not to make them look like veneers. Yeah, I, you know, and I told you this too. I feel like I could spot veneers, you know, 10 yards away. Big, bulky, like horse teeth. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And so they don't I, have to look that way. That's in the hands of the dentist. Not at all. In fact, I had, I had a lady that come, came in about two months ago with veneers, 12 veneers on the top, 12 veneers on the lower teeth, and she asked me to redo her veneers because everybody says that she has veneers. Okay. And somebody told her that I can make her veneers not look like veneers, which I can. And... Uh, Unfortunately, I felt very bad for her, but we had to redo everything that another dentist did, and uh, I, I created veneers for her that now don't look like veneers. So they just look like beautiful, beautiful teeth. It's not just the size. Yes, they're a little bit smaller. They, the color looks translucent. The porcelain that I use is uh, enamel replacement porcelain. So it doesn't look like porcelain. It doesn't look like uh, chiclets. They look like nice white, natural teeth. Rene, I want you to look at the before and after when we put them side by side. Have a look at what we did. Look at the It holes. is a big difference, okay. Look at that. From holes to no holes, yeah. Look at her smile. What do they say when it's all done? Well, my biggest compliment is when they don't say when they just cry. <laughs> you know? Do they really cry? So when they look in the mirror the first time, they get emotional about it? Yes. You know, some don't, but you know, many of them do. They used to ask me what I do for a living when I just started my cosmetic journey and I, I was telling people that I make people smile. And now I tell people that I make people cry. Is that right? <laughs> In a good way. I mean, you really say it. So that's one of your, uh, you know, that's very yes. good. It's very and uh, that, that's really the biggest compliment that I can get. How much say-so? Okay, so somebody's watching this. They're thinking about veneers. And, you know, of course, I have my own questions. And, and uh, you know, knowing you were coming, I'm asking questions about veneers and things like that. Uh, what about how much say-so do they have and what it's going to look like? Because it seems very permanent to me. Uh, I mean, how much say-so does a patient... I mean, how do they know what it's going to look like, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Well, when I do a smile makeover, uh, whether it's two veneers, four veneers, or 20 veneers for the entire mouth, I show people what uh, the smile could look like. We choose a smile out of a smile catalog. A catalog, is that right? Yeah, a smile catalog. They just pick it. And they just pick what, uh, what they would like to, to look like. Uh, very often I ask them to bring a picture of a celebrity uh, that they would like to uh, to look like. Really? Did they ever bring pictures of me in there by any chance? <laughs> right now, for, unfortunately not, but maybe one day, maybe next time somebody will bring a picture of you. <laughs> All right. Okay. So they bring in a picture and they'll say, this is what I want. And then what? Then what? Then what happens? And then the design part starts. Okay. okay. And uh, there's a lot of science that goes into uh, deciding what each tooth and the entire smile combined is going to look like at the end. Do you Rel see it, by the way, that, you know, they say artists, they could see the end result. When you do a consult with a patient, patient goes to you, do you, do you feel that way? Do you see it and go, 
Oh boy, this is gonna be good. Absolutely, and that's what you I get. Do? I do, and I, I get really excited because <laughs> I, I can envision, I can see exactly what they can look like at the end, and uh, I'm almost start, I'm almost crying at that moment myself. Really? Because I know what it's going to make them feel like, and I know the changes that it will make in their, in their lives. Um, one of the things that I do sometimes is uh, to show the person that's, uh, that's coming to me is uh, create a wax up on a model to show them what it can look like to help them choose okay. what they would, they would want their, their smile to be. Because honestly, sometimes there are a couple of excellent options and we decide together what the final option would be.